Okay guys, I got another cleaning tutorial for you today. I have right here a Batman number 227, which is this uh, classic Neil Adams cover. I'm actually prepping this book for the Neil Adams signing that's coming up at CGC. It's one that I picked up raw on eBay after looking at a bunch of auctions. It definitely has some defects, but it definitely is gonna benefit from the cleaning and subsequent press that I'm gonna do to it. Uh, this one will probably require more than one uh, cycles of pressing. So I usually press front and back and then it rests in the press for 24 hours. So we'll see if I, how uh, clean I can get this one. It looks pretty good. Doesn't have any uh, writing on it, which a lot of these copies have writing on them. It definitely has some spine uh, stress and spine tears. The staples look good, which is uh, a big issue with this book. You, a lot of the time, will get these uh, uh, staples that are either rusted or they're torn around the staples. But I did want to point out, so this is what you're looking at, like spine stress, these crinkles right here. We have at least uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, major color-breaking spine ticks, maybe one, two, three, four, and other than that, uh, it, the spine looks pretty good. The next thing you want to look at are the corners. So the corners are blunted a little bit, but they they look pretty good for considering the age of this book, right? So you want to look uh, something here we can probably fix a little bit. And then if you look at these edges, we have uh, some stress around this corner. So let's see right there, if you can see. So it's a little, not, not chipping, but uh, a little bit of wear right there. Same with this corner. We have a little bit of wear right there, but otherwise it, it looks relatively good. The main thing is, is that what I saw on this cover is that the colors looked really good. And that was the main thing. I wanted something that presented well. A lot of these can be dulled out. There weren't any major creases on the cover, which a lot of times there are creases. Uh, I can see, for example, let's see if I can get the light to, oh, there we go. So we can get the light to hit it. So that is something that I can get out with pressing. Uh, I think I saw another dimple right there. Uh, if you see right there, where is it? Where'd it go? Right around there, there's a little dimple or so that I can get out. Oh, there it is. Right there, I can get out with pressing. Uh, if, if it doesn't get out with a press, with humidification or press, then I can get it out with a steel roller ball, which is kind of an advanced technique we can talk about later. Uh, another there, uh, pressing defect. So other than that, I mean, it, it looks really good. There's a bend right there that'll come out with pressing. Uh, another bend on the, the other far corner. Uh, and then you can see those spine ticks right there. So a lot of those bends around those ticks can will come out through pressing. But again, look at the, look at the label. I mean, there there's good color there, right? So I'm not gonna really wanna touch this cover very much other than uh, a lot of dusting and uh, wiping with the cloth. So I'll show you the back. I'm gonna take my other backer board, do a little VIP flip right there, and then we'll take a look at the back. The back looks really good as well. There's some, uh, I think, marking from, uh, I think those was newsstand marking, so I don't know how that's gonna necessarily affect the grade, but it, it's very minor. It doesn't really affect anything major, but the back cover is really dirty. So you're gonna see how much we can clean up this back cover using these cleaning methods. Uh, one of the other things, and you kind of, this is what you learn when you start looking at a bunch of these, but you'll notice there's a, a this little like crease right there. And then right here, I forget the technical name for this, but it's a a, a printing fold, I believe, or something like that. But basically it's a, it's a manufacturer defect through the printing process that causes these. And if you look at a lot of graded copies online, they all, or even raw copies, they all have this mark and they all have that mark. So I can be confident that I'm not gonna get dinged very much if this is like, if you see every issue of this book and it has this right here. Uh, but you can see the cover is very dirty and uh, it's gonna benefit a lot from cleaning. So I'm going to uh, start out with the front cover. And since this one's gonna take me a little bit of time, I'm probably going to start the front, finish the front, and then I'm going to flip over to the back cover and then I'll put it on some time lapse so you're not sitting there uh, listening to me ramble on while trying to fill content while I, while I do that back cover. So I'm gonna start with this front cover. 
I got some decent light in here. I got my mat out, uh, my absorbing pad. I have uh, my magic eraser, which I'm not going to use until I get to the back cover and really desperately need it. A regular re eraser and then kind of my, my really uh, tried and true method right here is this little guy. This is the one that, that does a lot of the work. And then uh, a, basically what this is a Swifter pad, but they work really well. You can use unscented Kleenex as well. Uh, but the Swifter pad is really good for just uh, wiping a lot, of, a lot of dust and dirt. So I'm going to start out. Uh, I don't need the other back of board right now, but I do want to just start out by you know, wiping it a little bit, seeing how the, co the cover turns out just with some gentle wipes. Now, again, uh, I talked about this in the last video, but you're going to be really cautious around these areas. You're going to be cautious around the edges. You're going to be cautious around the ticks. You don't want to do anything severe on the ticks. Uh, so we're just going to go along and gently in a circle wipe these areas. Again, this, this particular book has a really nice uh, vividness to the color, so we don't really want to affect that uh, negatively. So there's uh, one tool that I break out sometimes, which is the drafting eraser. Uh, I have one here in the, the plastic bag. So this is uh, for a lot of heavy cleaning, you know, I'll use it on the back of a cover to try to clean up a lot of that. You could use it on here, but for this cover, I really don't want to affect these really nice colors on here. So I'm just going to use this, uh, this cloth to wipe it to see how it does. And then what I'm really going to focus on, which is uh, where you can really tell the difference between a clean cover and a dirty cover, is going to be this lettering and the moon, right? So you could easily see the dirt on the moon. You can easily see dirt on the lettering around the label over here. Now, it's really difficult because uh, there is really, uh, it's not white, it's yellow background or this uh, faint white or cream color for the moon. And uh, if you use an eraser on there, you're going to take up the, the color underneath. And I forget the year right now that this was uh, published in, but you know, it's, it's made it through a lot and I'm not gonna be the one that uh, messes it up, just trying to, to make it look better. The, the key here is less is more. So knowing when to stop when you're doing cleaning or you're doing pressing or anything like that is uh, really the, the key. And I absolutely love this cover. I mean, I'm starting to get more into these horror covers. Uh, I really like Neil Adams' work. I mean, he's, he's of course, done some phenomenal stuff, uh, especially in DC and Batman. But I, I really like his older horror stuff. The House of Secrets covers that he did in the 80s and uh, 92, I think 88 and 92 and 89 or something are some of my favorite covers, one that I'm definitely gonna have to add. I actually have another one over here I'll show you guys. So this is one I'm sending in as well. This is uh, Phantom Stranger, number 14. And it's just a phenomenal cover. I mean, it's, it's probably not like a ridiculously expensive book, but to me, that's just great art. And this is actually supposed to be a Swamp Thing prototype, uh, one of the earlier renditions of that. And I just really like all the, the action in this cover. I mean, you got this unassuming girl, this guy who obviously sees something, and you can tell that he's shocked just by the illustration here. Swamp Thing and then this guy who's the Phantom Stranger. Uh, so this is another cover I've, I've cleaned and pressed and really excited to send that in. I might give it one final touch up pressing because uh, pressing can revert after some time. So if you guys are ever wondering how you can have a 9-8 and you can look at the, the slab and in there you'll see spine ticks or you'll see some things. I've, I've mentioned in other videos that a 9-8 doesn't mean it's perfect. But a lot of the times, uh, pressing can revert, you know. I always joke that, uh, of course, I have little kids right now, so I watch uh, Frozen a lot. And I always joke that from Frozen 2, how uh, Olaf says that water never forgets. You know, paper never forgets, too. So even if it's, think about it, how long have these spine ticks been here? How long have those creases been there? They've been there for, for decades, right? And a lot of the times the paper is, is permanently damaged. So even though you can press it and it'll immediately look good, uh, think of it like a mattress, right? Like you put pressure on the mattress, the mattress will, will divot, but then if you give it time, it's gonna go back to its original form. So the same with the paper, the paper never forgets. You're gonna press it 
and a lot of the times those uh, those creases, the bends, the spine ticks will kind of reveal themselves over time again. So if you have a press, uh, you have a book that was pressed before grading that's been graded and then encapsulated, some of those things can appear while it's encapsulated. So it's not that CGC's, you know, a bunch of morons over there or, you know, something was wrong with the grader that day. Uh, those things do happen. I mean, those, those reversions do occur. All right, so I think that's uh, good for uh, a white down. As I said, I'm gonna focus really on these areas, uh, this area around the logo and the Batman one. So, you know, I, I can imagine if I was a grader looking at this book, I can tell how beat up it is immediately by looking at this. And to me, right away, it looks really clean. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really spend too much time on it because I don't wanna pull up any of these colors that, uh, that uh, are, are giving it that really vivid feel to it. So I'm not gonna use uh, this eraser, I'm just gonna use the absorbing pad. I'm gonna go in a single direction away from the edge. You definitely don't wanna go this way and catch the edge of the page. So I'm just gonna kinda go this way. I'm gonna take a look at it. I see there's like a little smudge right here, so I might give that a little special attention. You can see, look at that. That, that lined up right there. So that little smudge. I just spent some, some, a couple of seconds, and now that's uh, lined up a whole lot. You don't, even with this, even though that this is a kind of a, mining, a minor cleaning tool and very mild, you don't wanna still kind of like give it a lot of friction. So, <coughs> excuse me, you just really want uh, light pressure and take your time. And there, there's really, I mean, if you're in a rush, you shouldn't be doing this. This is something you should be doing if you are relaxing, if the kids have gone to bed and you don't, you've already binged watched the, the boys season one and two again, and you don't wanna, you wanna relax a little bit before bed, this is what you do. You know, you shouldn't be doing it, trying to squeeze it in last minute before signing. You know, I'm, I'm doing this and the signing deadline's like three weeks out, so I can spend my time on it. I don't need to sit here and worry about it. I mean, this is uh, definitely a high dollar book and you don't want to mess it up and then be pissed at yourself that you uh, messed it up because you were trying to rush in between other tasks or something like that. All right, so let me take a closer look at this guy right here. Honestly, it looks really good. That, that, that was mainly the reason I bought this book is just the, the front cover looks so good and so many of them were beat up. I mean, there were some that had less spine ticks, but they all had you know, corner creases and, and uh, bends to them, a lot of uh, color breaks on the cover or the colors just weren't, weren't that vivid. And this one kind of just stood out at me and I was like, oh, that's, you know, the, the spine ticks are definitely gonna knock it down, but that's a good looking cover, you know? Some of them are really faded out, but the black is really black. The mood is super spooky. And I don't know if you guys have seen, you know, people have different opinions about signatures or signature series books. And uh, certainly, oh, and I just wanna show you guys that. So look, there's definitely, this black wasn't there before. So that's why you have to be very cautious. Like this is probably even too much, you know? So you're, you are pulling up some color when you're doing this and you have to be cautious. So that's not only is that dirt, but a lot, a little bit of that is going to be ink. So that's a mixture of dirt and ink that's being uh, pulled up. So we're hoping you know, for for more of the latter, or I'm sorry, more of the prior. We want, we want. Uh, all right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go really lightly with the eraser on the moon. I mean, I'm I'm not putting any pressure on this. I'm just letting the the eraser kind of do its work. Stay away from the areas that have darker color. Because again, I really feel like if I was a grader looking at this, the two places I would look to kind of get a judge on its condition is the trade dress right here and any light areas and specifically this moon. Because I, I, you know, looking at me on eBay, looking at these copies and, and wherever they were listed, the first places I would look is this moon, uh, the, the trade dress and the moon. And if I saw that this was all messed up, I knew that the copy wasn't going to be 
It wasn't going to be good. All right, I'm already liking the way this is looking, so I don't think I'm going to spend too much time <clears throat> on, on this cover. I'm just going to give uh, it a little more, give the moon a little more work. Again, being very cautious of those spine ticks. I also took before and after, I'm going to take uh, after pictures, but I already took before pictures, and I'll post those as well. So you kind of see the before, the front and back before, and then front and back after. And we'll do, uh, I'll take some pictures before or after just cleaning, and then I'll take out pictures after pressing as well. And I know I owe you guys a pressing tutorial, but um, I wanted to really get a couple cleaning videos out there because I think that this is something that everybody can do even if they don't invest in a press. They can certainly clean their own books. This is a skill you can learn while you're kind of transitioning and segueing into getting into depressing. And I think when you see positive results doing this, it's going to get you excited and make you want to do that jump to, uh, to getting into pressing. And again, you know, that corner right there, that's something I want to be very cautious of. So I'm going to wipe that. Do some small circles again. I mean, that guy's scary. <laughs> that guy's scary, man. Dogs, it's ladies. He, I mean, Neil has a kind of amazing talent. That's, uh, the, the amount of emotion you can convey and the action in the, in the cover is awesome. So anyways, I was, uh, so I'll circle back to talking about, I was saying that, you know, uh, Neil, people will talk about signature series, whether they like it or don't like it. And uh, people's signatures, so some people's signatures are, are horrible. Uh, people's signatures, of course, change over time. <clears throat> a really recent example of that is Frank Miller's. You know, Frank Miller used to do this like FM thing, and uh, it was relatively cool. I mean, it was, it was okay. But now, uh, you know, his more recent ones, if you saw any of them from the 2020 signing at CGC, once you think uh, a, a you know something phallic looking, you can't get it out of your mind. I mean, you just look at that and you're like, "What was he thinking? Why, why is he drawing that? Um, you know, why did he change his signature like that?" And people change their writing, but I didn't expect them to you know change their signature that much. But anyways, um, you know, talking about the the types of signatures, Neil Adams signatures are super cool. He actually does them to incorporate into the, the scene of the cover. So uh, if you've ever seen the Tomb of Dracula or this cover, which has some similarities in terms of kind of this fog, that must be a theme that he really likes, he likes that fog, then um, you'll, you'll see that he likes to do his signature like into the fog, so that it, or the, into the mist, so that it looks like it's part of the original cover. So, I mean, it definitely looks like Neil Adams, but it'll look like, you know, Neil Adams kind of squifting with, like, things misting into the fog. And uh, I really like that. It's kind of like a cool signature thing. It's a little incognito for people that hate just, like, big signatures. Like, he would never do a huge signature across this because, why? It's such a beautiful cover, you know? You don't want to mess it up. All right. So, I'm already loving the way this is looking. The, the, the colors are really nice. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do, I'm going to go over to the back. I might spend some more time on this uh, off camera, but I want to give you an overview. The thing I want to do now is uh, flip through the pages. Oh yeah, I forgot about this one. So this one also has this um, number 80 written there on the inside cover. I'm going to get rid of that. But let's, uh, let's look through this. And I'm going to do it just like a CGC grader. I mean, you want to, you want to feel the pages. Definitely off white, you know. Those are those are not white pages. Got some yellowing, but they they're looking pretty good. Uh, we want to we want to flip through it, and we want to make sure that uh, all the pages are intact. That there's not big chunks missing from anything over here. Damn, the cool the cool issue, right? Back when it was so dark. Okay, uh, so we can look here. Let's look at the staples. Staples are nice. They haven't been messed with, so you can tell if staples have been messed with if uh, 
there's a white mark, you know, where like an old staple used to be, but right here I can see that there's uh, rubbing from the staple on the side of it and they all line up. So all of that lines up and that's telling me that these staples have never been messed with. This uh, center fold hasn't been detached and reattached. So those are all things we want to check. <clears throat> All right. I don't know how many pages are in this book, but it doesn't look like any are missing. Look, this is uh, origination of the Mark Jewelers, right? Telling people, stop buying comics, buy your wife uh, or buy your girlfriend a diamond. This is cool too. Look at that. I really like all these, it's like a snapshot in time. Okay, so let's be very gentle with this cover. We'll flip it over and let's see if we can't get rid of that number 80, being very gentle. And I'm gonna do this live so you guys can see. Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm just gonna try the eraser. I'm gonna go very gentle. Actually, I clean this up a little bit. Luckily, that's pencil. And what was my motto? Don't overdo it. If it's between, oh, there's a little bit left, and oops, I just put a hole in the page, then let's stick with... Uh, Oh, there's a little bit left. But I think, uh, look at that. All gone. And it's interesting, I forgot, you know, when they listed this book, they took a picture of that, you know, as if uh, writing on the cover, on the inside of the cover was like a, you know, a huge deal. And I looked at that and I was like, ah, I can take care of that. So that's uh, one of the benefits of this too, you know? When you know you have these, uh, these skills, these uh, abilities to do this stuff, then you can underpay for books because other people will be a little concerned and they won't do it. I also notice, you know, this, this cover, I'm probably, when I press this, and usually I put a, a sheet under the front cover, I'm probably gonna put the sheet under this cover just to make sure that I protect those staples and I don't get any additional, additional tear on there. And the last thing I want to do is pull that cover away from the screen. Okay, so this is what's going to take some work and I'm going to spend some time on it. So let's start on this edge. Basically what I'll do is I'll, um, well, let's start. I'll just give it a quick wipe to get all the big particles off. Again, gentle around the edges. But you guys did see up close what this looked like, right? Let me make sure everything's going fine. Yeah, this is a great example because this thing's gonna look baller when it's uh, all cleaned up. All of this stuff's gonna be gone. Okay, now the way this works, this is how you should approach it. This is nice and centered. Okay, so the way you should approach this is to do uh, all the edges kind of first. So the way you're gonna do the edge, you're basically gonna like line this up so that all the, you're covering all of the colored areas and you're gonna work on this edge. Then you're gonna line this up and you're gonna do all of this edge, except you're gonna be very careful because these are your corners and you don't wanna catch those and tear the page. Similarly, you're gonna do this edge, clean this up, and then finally, this edge. And then you can even do that for sections of it. So if you want to get all crazy and do like something there, and then you put another page right there, and then you do this area, you can do that too. But we are gonna start with uh, this edge, and then I will so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start with this eraser. So I'm going to do this, <clears throat> and then I'm going to 
uh, switch over to some time lapse because I don't think you want to sit here and see all this tedium. How's that sound? Now, I usually say one direction. You can kind of go in both directions. Just be very careful. When you get to these edges, do not go in both directions. Just go outward toward the corner of the page. And then we'll have this guy clean that up. Already that's looking a lot better. Okay, now I'm gonna try a little bit with the absorbing pad. I always say absorbing, but it's a absorbing. So this is the absorbing pad. And again, I'm going away from the page. Okay. Now last, I'm going to break out the secret tool to only be used in emergencies, right? Uh, so this is a magic eraser cut into small cubes. And I'm going to gently rub this. Do not do it like this on a modern book. You will take up all of the gloss. So this is something you can use on older books. And again, sparingly. Don't want to overdo it with this. And you want to make sure you wipe away all of these particulates. It, again, this is basically like sand, this is like sandpaper. So I'm erasing all the big stuff. And then I'm using this to really clean up the Tiny stuff. Okay, now let's see if I can get that out. All right, I'm gonna call it on that. That will make for some good before and after pictures. Okay, so let me bring this up close. All right, this little strip is what I've cleaned so far. Oh, so there's that line right there. It's, it's not as clear, but look, from uncleaned to cleaned, right? And I got rid of that little yellow, red smudge right there. So that this is what the whole cover is going to look like when we're done with it. It's going to take time, but uh, we're going to do it. So I'm going to stop the video here, switch over to time lapse, and then we'll come back after that. Sound good? All right.
Okay guys, that wraps it up. So I have spent a good amount of time cleaning up this back cover. Probably took me an additional 25 minutes or so just to get as much as I could off. I'll show you what it uh, looks like now. I'll also post a couple pictures. So like I said, you know, knowing when to quit is the key. Now there's some spots right there that is staining, you know, so you can scrub at that all you want, but you're not gonna get that up that's uh, deep set into the paper. There are some advanced methods that either use distilled water or a mixture of 10% uh, hydrogen peroxide and use that to clean that uh, in a little more. But uh, any more than that, I will, um, I, I wouldn't do you know that on this book. And it's definitely something that you should not do as a beginner. So, you know, just trying to be easy. I did notice this, this little smudge. I didn't know that uh, when I started working on it, but I see that there's a little bit of rub right there. Try to be gentle in that area. I clean this little area up. It looks like maybe where it had some water damage in the past or something. But uh, overall, I give this a, a little more, a little bit of a wipe. I am going to get myself a new backer board. And I'm going to flip this over. And I'll save this for tomorrow to do the pressing on. Maybe I'll give it one more look in the, in the daylight since it's uh, nighttime right now. And just to give it a little bit of protection, I'm gonna go to that center fold, grab myself a, a backer board. And when I press this, that's where this is gonna be. So I'm gonna put that in there. It's always good, prevents any more dings or anything. Uh, so that's it, you know, that, uh, that took some time, took some patience, nice and relaxing, saw some good tips and tricks on there. Really excited to uh, get this cleaned up and show you guys the process. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Also, if you have any suggestions of where the signature should go, I was thinking, you know, in this corner right here, uh, or I think that's mostly where he's done it, over here. And I kind of like that, as I was saying, because it blends into the, to the mist. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Let me know, and let me know if you have any questions.